driving, obviously, and kind of going uh, full circle again. Back to, well, I'm going back to my old town in Chicago, and I have to go to the DOT doctor because I'm gonna, like I said, I was thinking about driving again, the bus, and so I went to a place by me, and they basically hired me again, so in a different place. But it's funny, I have to go get my fingerprints done on Friday at the place where I used to drive. <laughs> so I gotta go in there and be like, uh, I'm, I'm trading, I'm a trader now, because I'm going to another, it's in the same company, um, but in, in another town. So that worked out. Um, but yeah, there it is. There is um, the bus bus station. I hope you could see it where I used to go. And yeah, the place I'm going now has so many much less buses. So and it's a really nice area too, where I'll be driving. Um, so I'm going to the DOT doctor to get another physical but this time they pay for it even though I've kept up with my CDL and my school bus permit um, as an independent driver so you can keep it keep your stuff where you don't lose it but you have to keep up everything go for training get a physical um, renew your permit but you can go independent so that's what I did because I didn't I didn't want to lose it because I wasn't sure if I would ever drive again the school bus but uh, I am, so good thing I didn't uh, let it expire. So that's where I'm going now, and I'm gonna show you this hotel, which was the, the scariest part of car life ever. And it was like when I was pretty much done car life, well, for the time being, and when it comes up, I'll show you. But this was the scariest part <laughs> of my whole car, local car life a journal, a journey. I don't know why I said journal, journey. And where I'm driving now is, okay, so over there, I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully I'm showing it to you, well, I don't know what I'm showing to you. Hang on. But back in there is where I went for pilot. Pilot Fitness to take a shower. So I'm back at my stop, stopping grounds. And if I get evicted and I have to go back in my car, I probably will come back out here again. I think. So I'm also, but I'm also going to go to my storage today after I do this doctor thing and get some stuff to put in my car. If it stops raining, there's no raindrops right now, but. This weather is so dreary here in Illinois. I mean, it's just, there's hardly ever sun. There hasn't been sun since like, uh, well, for sure since October. The whole time I've been in the apartment and out of the apartment and back in the apartment, there's hardly ever a sunny day. I, I charge my crystals uh, with the sun. So there was a sunny day the other day, so I took them all out of the little bag I have and put them on the windowsill. And then hopefully they could see the moon too at night. But I have some uh, like a necklace and stuff, my um, my crystal necklaces that I have by the windowsill now, and it hasn't been sunny in like two days. And it was only sunny the other day, like one time in forever. So it's really dreary here. I don't know how it is where you live, but let me know. But I do see the sun trying to peek out. Which is good because it's only it's um, 68 degrees, yay! So it's not too cold, um, not too hot. Because when I move around and put boxes in the car, I'm gonna get hot. So I wore a short sleeve shirt and my raincoat. But I'll show you the place that was the scariest thing when I get there. I'm almost there, so hang on. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. But where it says uh, Key Motel is <laughs> the 
such a seedy place. Wait, no, that's not it. It's the one after it. Hang on a minute. That's not the hotel. Motel. Um, but here's the work right where I have to go to get my thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me park over here. Although I'm kind of afraid to, so I'm probably going to move. Okay, so the budget lodge budget lodge it's over there the red sign budget lodge right there okay i'm gonna i'm hiding my car because i'm still still traumatized by the incident at that hotel so hang on let me park and i will get back with you when i come out of the work right place Richly Vans, okay. All right, so let me talk to you in a minute, but remember that hotel, hang on. Oh, hang on. Okay, so I'm leaving. I had to be there for friggin' forever to do the drug test, because I peed in the cup, oh, sorry. Peed in the cup, but um, it was like just below the line. Every other time, the people don't fucking care if it's below the line. But this lady, she um, cared, so I had to drink two waters a bottle. Bottles of water. See, there's the hotel. Uh, well, is that the one? Maybe it was the other one. It was probably the other one that I showed you the first time. A seedy, seedy hotel. Seedy hotel that I went to um, to after my storage unit. Because if you can see, right there, if you're seeing the orange roof, that is the storage unit. Hopefully you saw that. Oh, there, there it is. Public storage. So, that's the one that I have to window down. Um, let's see, I'll go this way. No, no I'm not going to go to the next one. So, um... Yeah, so when I was getting like the last bit of things out of the storage unit that I didn't want. Yeah, I guess it was stuff that I didn't want anymore or didn't want to keep or because I had it in the little unit. I went to that hotel right down the street and threw everything in their dumpster. I had done it before, you know, not as much stuff, but I had used it before, no problem, got in there and you know I kind of was like worried because it is a seedy hotel and if you look online it's like there's poop on the bed you know they don't clean I guess there's uh, maybe prostitutes that go there and do stuff and just really seedy so anyway you know I went back again because you know I had to throw out stuff I was living in my car like where where am I? I don't have like a kitchen trash can so I would uh, I was throwing the stuff out in um, their dumpster so the second time I went, when, like I said, I was clean, cleaning out my storage unit and ready to move out to the uh, my old area, I went there and I threw out, like, more big items. Like, I threw out a bookshelf. Like, it wasn't heavy. But at first I threw out, like, all the dog's old blankets because I just didn't want to keep those from in the car. And, um, because Amelia had, like, two accidents. And, you know, once they have an accident, I feel like they might go again on that particular blanket so and I was just like done with um, having all that in the car even though I did wash it but still so I threw out a whole bunch of dog blankets and I threw out um, some other things and then I threw out this bookshelf that you know wasn't heavy to pick up it was a little bookshelf and I'm carrying it and I'm throwing it in this dumpster that was pretty much full I had to open the other side so my stuff was like kind of like oh it was the whole dumpster was overflowing so i guess a lot of people maybe go to that dumpster you know because you see it right on the road you're like, oh there's a dumpster let me turn it into the seedy hotel and throw things out so you know i'm i'm lifting the um the bookshelf out of my car you know and i have it kind of up like a, like a pizza man holding a box and i throw it into um the trash and this Indian guy at first I didn't know who he was he comes he's walking oh 
oh, oh, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? I'm like, I'm throwing stuff out. I'm like, I don't need it anymore. And he's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I'm like, oh, isn't it a public dumpster? You know, like, I don't think it is, but I just said that. And um, I said, I just throw stuff out. And so as I dumped the bookshelf into my car, I mean, into the dumpster, you know, he's, he's walking, getting closer to me, and he's, you know, yelling at me. So I go around my car, and I get in the car, and um, so he's still walking, you know, and he's like, uh, you're going to put that stuff back in. So I get in my car, and he walks, like, in front of my car. You know, I close the door, get in my car. He walks in front of my car. So luckily, you know, my intuition said lock the door. So I locked, went like this, you know, and locked the doors really quick. Because he was like, you're going to get, you're going to, you're going to get, take it back in, back in the car. And I was like, oh God, you know, he's, he's crazy. And then I realized it probably was the owner to the hotel. And I was like, he's probably going to throw trash in my car or something, you know, like, so, um, I couldn't move because he was walking, you know, in front of my car. So luckily I locked the door, you know, just my intuition said lock the door. And he comes around to the passenger side and he tries to open my door. And I'm like, oh my God, um, this is going to be on the news. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to be killed. You know, I just, this was not going to go well. And so he tries to unlock my door and I'm like, thank God I locked it. He tries to get in with the handle on, on the passenger side door. So I just like, I put it in um, drive because I was in park, you know, and I put it in drive and I just like took off. Well, before I took it off, he must have seen me put it in drive. He banged his hand on my passenger side window, you know, like this window, but on the passenger side, he banged it so hard. Like I really thought the glass was going to shatter. I mean, I really thought that he broke, um, broke, broke my window. You know, I was like waiting for any minute, you know, for it to, hang on, I gotta stop. For it to shatter, you know, like crumble and shatter, like, um, cause he just like, boom, you know, and he banged it real so hard, but, um, it didn't break. He probably broke his hand because, you know, and I, I looked it up online as far as like, can these windows break? And I guess they're double paned or something. So, um, they don't break, but he probably broke his hand or hurt it for sure because he hit it so hard when he saw me put it in drive and I just pulled out like he, he had a, he had to like jump back because I mean, he, I could have hit him, you know, run over his foot or something. That's how close he was to my car hitting on it. And, um, so I, I just floored it. Now, mind you, this park, this is a CD hotel. The parking lot is really small and it, it goes around the building. So it goes, it's like a U, like a, like a boxed U. Um, but luckily I've been there before. So I knew that it was a tight turn, like to go around the building. Um, but my car can handle anything, you know. So I floored it and I went around that turn like I was Mario and Dreddy. And it was a sharp turn. It was like, you know, like a square. Well, uh, a rectangle. To, you had to go down and you had to make a quick left behind the back of the building. And then a quick left to go back out again. To get out of the parking lot. Of the, and the building was in the middle of the rectangle. So luckily I had been there before. So, but I floored it and I took that turn like so quickly and my car is really good at turns it's um all-wheel drive and I, I don't know does that mean my back wheels turn too I don't know what that means um but my car is a beast in the snow anyway so I did that you know and he like jumped back because I guess he wasn't expecting me to like just speed away and so then I'm coming around the building like on the other side of the rectangle the U and I'm like oh shit now I gotta go past the office because I figured he was like the owner so I go past you know so I slow down because I'm like oh my god he's gonna he's gonna like 
run and cross the front of the building, the rectangle building, and meet me as I'm coming out of the parking lot. And, you know, so I was slowing down. I didn't want to hit him. I didn't want to run him over. But then I was also like, he might have a gun. He might shoot me. You know, so I slowed down to go past, like, where he would have come out, like, in the front of the building, come past that wall. And I would see him, and he, he didn't. But I wasn't going to wait around to see if he was going back in to get a gun or a rifle or something. So I um, got through the parking lot, you know, to where you exit. And cars were coming. I mean, this is Cicero. But I looked to my right, and there was a turning lane. And, I mean, there was a truck right there coming. And I just made a sharp turn because my car can make such sharp turns. So I made a sharp turn to the right and sped up and got in the turning lane so I wasn't going into traffic but there was a truck right there I mean if he was turning he could have hit me but um you know I knew he saw me so I just hurried up and made a quick right out of that parking lot into a turning lane and went down some street I didn't even know where it was and I found my way back to um where I needed to be because I was so afraid that I was going down like a dead end and I would have to come back out and go past um, this motel again, this seedy person. So, but I found my way out and I actually, I actually went like four blocks around because I had to go to the DOT where I just was. And I didn't want to like drive past the hotel again, motel, it's a motel. That's what, how you know it's seedy. I didn't want to go past it on this side of the street, on the right side of the street, and then have to stop in traffic till I could turn left to get right across the street to where the DOT doctor is. So I went like four blocks, like way out of my way, so that I could come around Cicero and be on the same side as the workforce, work right, um, a DOT doctor. And then I went in, so I was like, oh, you know, hopefully he's not looking out his window searching for me. Um, so I turned in and then I hid my car like I did today so that he couldn't see it. But I was really afraid that he would like run across the street. Like that's how mad he was. And I guess, I guess maybe they get charged per pound of, um, a dumpster. I'm not quite sure, but people must be doing this all the time because he was quite angry. And I was like, I'm gonna be on the news, this is how I die. You know, I may just thought the whole scenario could go back bad really quickly, really quickly. And it was like, my life didn't pass before my eyes, but you know, I mean, it was just a moment in time when I was just trying to throw out some shit that it could have gone, took a really bad turn if this guy was like mental. And I guess he is kind of mental because I saw some reviews. Um, you know, that he argues with people and, um, you know, charges charges them more, won't refund money, you know, like when they go in and they see, like, there's poop on the sheets or throw up or stinks or whatever, and then he'll, they'll go back in and try to get their money back and be like, I'm not staying in this shithole. Like, he only gives them, like, ten bucks back or something like that. Like, very, um, combative. So... My whole life, car life, local dweller adventure when I was out here in Chicago, that was the scariest moment of my life was that. So I will never go do that again. And I am going to be, um, you know, very discerning about where I do put um, my trash from now on <laughs> because you might have an angry Indian man coming coming to try to get in your car but he, I, I swear he had to have broke his um, hand or he definitely hurt it I mean he hit it so hard I thought for sure that it was gonna go and just shatter and then I'm like oh then he'll be in my car because there'll be no lock you know the windows open that's why I floored it and like I said, he jumped back, you know, like kind of lost his balance a little bit. And then he just stuck, I looked in my rear view mirror before I hit the turn, you know, the sharp turn. And he was just standing there. He kind of looked baffled. Like, I don't know if he thought that I would just stay there and conversate with him. Um, but he kind of, he kind of looked like, with his head tilted, like, 
This bitch just took off. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm taking off. Are you trying to get in my car? To put trash in my car? Uh, my trash was clean. I don't want no one else's trash in my car. He don't know what I put in there. <sighs> that was very scary. I was very tra traumatized. And even still, like, I'm afraid to go past uh, <laughs> that motel. Um, before I had my blinds up so my car looked tinted. So now I don't have those. I think I took them off too when I when I went um, to the work right doctor. Just so that my car looked different. But I, I got a sticker on the back of my car that says Faith. <laughs> you know, or whatever it says. Um, I forget what the sticker says. But I know it says Faith. And I'm like, oh God. Like how many people have that sticker on the back of their Audi? You know? Like he could tell it was me if he... if he, Because he was staring at me as I was driving away. And his baffled look. Like, that bitch just took off. So, but then again I was thinking, well maybe he thought I had a gun. Or I was batshit crazy. So, which I can be. I've been known to be about shit crazy at times. So, anyway, that was that was my scariest car life story. <laughs> Period. That was it. Other things weren't scary. I got. I was truly blessed. Other things were not scary at all. Okay, don't don't hit my car. But now I'm gonna go into my PO box, get my mail, and then I have to go to my doctor's to get them to sign off because um, I'm diabetic that I could drive the school bus so being there forever just kind of ruined my fucking day I had another plan I was going to go do storage but I figured I'll do this doctor thing and then I'll do I have to go get something from the DMV so I'll do that today so it kind of messed up my plans but I have to come back Friday for them to read my TB test and I have to go to my old bus company to get fingerprinted so they're gonna think I'm a traitor but um, but I will um, talk to you guys soon but I wanted to let you know that my scary car video a scary car um, car life experience and that was it <laughs> very very scary so all right I'll talk to you guys later